Let's go through the current project layers that we're going to have in our project. Um, I'm going to review the service repo as we do this so I can explore it a little bit. I'll also start to share with you some of the base um, design philosophies that drive the guideline. Design philosophies drive the guidelines that drive the policies. It kind of works in this way. In fact, I can give you two design philosophies right now that when we feel like we're missing a guideline, we go back to this design philosophy, okay? We always go back down to these two. These two are really critical. The first one, we don't make things easy to do. We make things easy to understand. That at times means that you might have to be tedious. It means you might be copying and pasting code more. In order, instead of taking an abstraction, or instead of sometimes um, going down that route of dry, do not repeat yourself, we might want to copy something. We may want to, we want to try to uh, minimize that abstraction. And so we don't want to make things easy to do. We want to make things easy to understand. And there are times where we're going to look at some code and go, is this easy to understand or, or did we just do something that's easy to do? I, I want you to understand that it's not about your time at two o'clock on a Tuesday to make your coding faster. It's about how quickly you can find that bug when it's in production. That's what I want you to optimize for. Don't optimize to feel productive when you're writing code. I want you to optimize to feel productive when there are things failing on the production system because that's the real stress. That's, that's when you're the hero. That's, that's when you're winning or losing. It's the production problem, not, oh man, I just knocked out all this feature functionality in a week. I get scared. Oh, what, are you, what does that code look like? You did that, what? Whoa, 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 slow down, all right? But when that production bug hits and you're like, Bill, I just fixed that in a half an hour, now I'm dancing. Well, I'm like, that's it. Everything that you did was to that moment, you, that was a win, that's success. So we make things easy to understand, not easy to do. I'm not about making your programming life faster. The second one has to do with this idea of precision. Every encapsulation, every function, every variable, Every piece of code we write must define a new semantic where one is absolutely precise. This one's a little harder to just say and light bulbs go on. But we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this idea of precision at some point, all right? And sometimes precision means that things are more granular. And actually sometimes precision means that they're less granular. And so I've gotta show you some of this but I want you to have this idea of precision, that things are precise. Because when things are precise, things tend to be more obvious. When things are more obvious, then more people can understand them without all the comments, without all the extra um, ceremony. And that's what I'm looking for. I, I love comments in code when something isn't obvious. But then I'm gonna ask myself, is this, obvious, is this not obvious just because there's complexity here or because we introduce complexity? There's this great quote that says, you can't make complex things simpler, but you can absolutely make them more complex, <laughs> right? And so I don't buy into this idea that some, you know, this is complex, well, then make it simpler. We wanna make things simple until we can't, but there are some problems that are just complex. They are just complex. You can't make them simpler. And so we have to recognize that at times, and then maybe the code just can't be obvious, and then we need those comments. But I think a lot of times we, software engineers, overcomplicate things. And that's what I'm looking to try to prevent, trying to at least recognize, are we doing that? And if we can keep things simple until we can't, we can reduce a lot of that. Those are the two core sort of design philosophies as I'm looking at code all the time. All right, is this easy to understand? Is it obvious? Is there precision here? And if not, then we have to refactor. Now, let me say this too before we, we look at any more code. There are two different modes that I need you to be in at all times. And early on, you're gonna hear me say what mode I'm in. There's programmer mode and engineer mode. 
And if you hear me use the word hack, I'm in programming mode. So what do I mean? We're gonna be shifting into these two modes all day, all week. So programming mode means that we're just looking for the 20 lines of code we need to figure out the happy path on something. When we're in programming mode, I don't care about idioms, guidelines, styles. I don't even care about error handling, to be honest with you. I just want the 20 lines of code that make something work. Now, the problem is, is that you can't stay in programming mode. Once you find the code you need that works, then we gotta switch to engineering mode. Now we care about idioms and guidelines and error handling. We care about where that code is and that it's following design philosophies and policies and all that stuff. That's the engineering mode. Eventually everything has to move, eventually we have to move to engineering mode. We can't stop in programming mode. Too many people I meet stop in programming mode. They put that programming in production and then we have problems. So we're gonna be in both modes. You're gonna hear me say, okay, let me hack on this. The moment I say, let me hack on this, you know I'm in programming mode. So I don't care about anything other than just watching Happy Path work in the best conditions possible, okay? But if I'm in engineering mode and you see something that I'm not doing, I mean, ask that question on the chat. Let's talk about it, what's happening here? Because now I should be following all the design guidelines. But again, refactoring comes in stages. We're gonna have a refactoring stage where we're focused on precision. We're gonna have a factoring, uh, refactoring stage where we're focusing on testability. We'll refactor for, for readability. It's like you don't, have to, you don't do one refactoring that's everything. You have to decide what are we gonna refactor to, well, let's look at if everything is obvious. Let's look at our syntax rules. Let's look at our, whatever that is. And we do it in stages. So remember that as well. We're, uh, we, that's part of the engineering process.